Hello everyone and welcome to Woody's Works. I am mechanical engineer who is also military history enthusiast. This is my first video of design philosophy series. Enjoy. In this video we will cover the famous interleaved road wheel design. It was widely used by German army during World War II. To keep this video short we are going to focus only usage on tanks. Although historically half tracks used it before tanks but they will have their own separate video someday. A interleaved wheels topic has been base for many debates in the internet. Some people say it was pointlessly overcomplicated and total waste of resources. They make statements as, if it was so good why did not the allies use it? And why it was abandoned after war? Others will make it as fine example of Germany's superior technology. But what is the truth? By truth I mean what was the logic behind interleaved road wheels? Clearly Germans had something rational in their mind by choosing this design. I can tell you the answer is not Hitler obsession to over-engineer things for fun. So stick with me and let's find out the reasons. Basic things first. What are interleaved road wheels anyway? Now let's take a quick look on three different layouts used by Germans to know their differences. Let's start with most common layout during World War II. The single row design. It is still being used today and became standard after war. As the name says. A straight line of road wheels arranged behind each other. Nothing fancy but gets the job done and it's simple. As you can see this fictional model tank of mine have five sets of road wheels per side. It also means only five contact points to weight distribution. For Germans this layout was good for lighter tanks as Panzer III and Panzer IV. But when they started developmenting new generation, heavier tanks, then it was not up for task. Mainly due the technological limitations in rubber material and torsion bars. So they needed a different kind of approach to deal with these problems. Next we're going to look interleaved layout. By the way, that SolidWorks tank model took around 3 hours to make but I hope you like it. Here is probably most famous tank of all time. Tiger 1. From bottom view. As you can see instead of single row there are 4 rows of wheels. What are also interleaved with each other. By doing this we can simply fit more road wheels into same space. So we have a total 8 contact points for weight distribution per side. What would be impossible with single row layout due no available room. Decreasing wheel diameter was not considered as good option. Later we will talk why. I should mention that the Tiger 1 early models used 4 layers of rubber banded wheels. But, as war went on. Germans introduced new steel wheels with internal dampening. It had only three layers of those. So removing the outer layer for railway transportation was no longer needed. The third type of layout is overlapped. It is often called interleaved by mistake. But, there is one key difference. The way road wheels are sitting on track is not symmetrical. By non-symmetrical I mean the wheels are always positioned unevenly from track's imaginary center. Historically it was used on Tiger II tank. While it offered some advantages as interleaved layout while being a bit less complicated. It turned out to be troublesome design by nature of uneven track support. So we could say it was least successful layout of all three types of road wheel configuration. The outer row and inner row of wheels. Track guide runs in central. Note different length of swing arms. A interesting photo. Overturned Tiger II tank abandoned somewhere in battlefield. It gives you a nice look of suspension arms and wheel configuration. The military man on that photo is Dwight D. Eisenhower, who later became 34th President of the United States. A museum photo of Tiger II overlapped wheels. Note wheels tight clearances. Now we have looked all three different layouts. Do you remember my fantasy tank model? First, when using single row I could only fit 5 wheels. But with interleaved it is possible to have 8 sets of wheels with same diameter. Why this gave huge advantage. Especially considering late 30 and early 40 technology we will talk next time. This is the end of part 1 in this series. Just to give you basic understanding of what is what before we go on. I hope to fit more content into one video but making CAD models takes really much time and effort. So, I came up to conclusion it's better to divide it up into shorter videos. 
Next time we will talk about the all advantages of interleaved layout. Overall I want to cover all aspect, like negative sides and post-war usage. Also why it was phased out by simpler designs. There is so much to talk actually. I hope you all had a good time and see you soon.